Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Cisco's Talus research team has an interesting write-up about a tool that they're seeing attacking open unprotected Docker instances. This is a fairly uh, old technique in the sense that yes, there are all these uh, unprotected Docker APIs available. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, exposure has of course uh, been used for a while now in order to install crypto coin miner, which also appears to be uh, this uh, tool's final goal. Cisco calls this particular bot Xanti and the part about the write-up that I sort of found the most interesting is how it spreads via SSH. Now we have seen a lot of bots, of course, that are just brute forcing SSH credentials. Uh, this is not Xanti's approach. Instead, once it breaks into a particular host, it will search this host for SSH credentials, uh, public keys, private keys that are either stored in standard locations like uh, .ssh or in configuration files. And then it will use uh, those keys uh, to find other machines uh, that are trusting uh, the particular compromised system. So this is of course classic in terms of abusing uh, trust relationships uh, between systems, in particular if you're using SSH for automated logins, it's often required that the respective uh, key files are not password protected. On the other hand, you should also limit what can actually uh, be done with uh, these keys. Detecting Xanti should really be not a problem. It's not really all that stealthy, for example, for HTTP requests. It uses curl, but changes the user agent of curl and even includes, for example, user agent strings like Xanti, that's where the name comes from, shell success, or we must have got killed, which of course are all user agent strings that if you're paying attention at all, should stick out pretty easily. It will also reconfigure the SSH server. So any changes to your SSH uh, daemon configuration uh, should uh, also be detected and it will configure uh, the SSH daemon to listen on port 33,768 in addition to port 22. And Trend Micro has an interesting write-up of a new Mac backdoor that they're attributing to the Ocean Lotus threat group. And pretty much all of the Mac malware that I've seen in recent months and years uh, usually arrived as a fake uh, flash update. Uh, this one is a little bit different. It arrives as a SIP archive, which is actually an app and it uses a Word document icon in order to disguise the actual nature of the file. Another trick they're playing in order to make it even more look like a Word document is that when you look at the file name in Finder, it has the .doc extension, typical for older style Word documents. Uh, but when you look at it closer in a hex editor, you actually notice that ahead of the doc extension, there is a Unicode character that is only displayed as a dot. The result is if the user clicks on the icon, it does not open Word because the extension is not actually a dot doc. It's just seen as a normal directory and then is open, which will execute the application. And to make things worse for the user, uh, the application actually is validly signed using an Apple developer certificate, uh, which of course is not that difficult to obtain. The actual malware then is actually relatively straightforward. It's a bash script and uh, to complete sort of the uh, ruse, uh, it will also open a Word document. So as far as the user is concerned, they clicked on a Word document and a Word document opened. 
And I got an interesting story, actually sort of two stories uh, that initially I didn't uh, know quite what to make of them or how important they are, but uh, I think uh, they still uh, serve as an important lesson. Bishop Fox uh, did uh, publish an advisory discussing a number of severe vulnerabilities in a package uh, called Open Clinic. Open Clinic is an open source uh, package that allows uh, doctor office and such to manage uh, medical records. And the vulnerabilities being discovered here are pretty severe in that it's possible to download arbitrary documents like uh, medical tests and so uploaded uh, by uh, doctors, uh, for example, but it also can reach uh, to arbitrary code uh, execution. And all of these uh, vulnerabilities are fairly basic and uh, simple to exploit and discover. Now, when I looked at it closer, uh, Open Clinic was really sort of substantially updated the last time four years ago. Some work was done on it about a year ago, but for all practical purposes, well, it sort of looks a little bit uh, like it is likely abandoned and also uh, Bishop Fox never really received any response to its vulnerability reports. But while looking at it, uh, I came across a second package. I sort of tried to figure out, well, how popular is Open Clinic actually? The GitHub repository didn't really look sort of overly busy like with issues uh, being filed and such. But I came across Open Clinic GA. Open Clinic GA looks like an independent software package. Different developers can't really find a definite link between these uh, two packages and Open Clinic GA is still actively maintained. On the other hand, when you're looking at uh, the uh, discussions around Open Clinic GA, which still uses SourceForge, uh, not uh, GitHub, like the other Open Clinic version. Well, uh, it turns out that there are some sort of outstanding vulnerabilities that apparently have been recently reported, uh, for example, uh, by the Cisco Talus uh, team for Open Clinic GA that still require patching. So, given all of uh, the interest in attacks against uh, medical facilities and such, over the last year and so if you are using either Open Clinic or Open Clinic GA, first of all, make sure which version you are using and uh, be ready to patch. There are probably a couple of important vulnerabilities soon going to be disclosed. Open Clinic GA, by the way, had a large uh, patch with a number of vulnerabilities that were patched back in July. And uh, yes, uh, that version still appears to be actively maintained. And then I want to draw your attention at a relatively new SANS initiative, uh, CyberStart. CyberStart is an online game for high school students that allows them to compete for a national cyber scholarship. Registration for the online platform which is really just a, sort of a capture the flag a style a game that, that teaches a bunch of stuff like Python and uh, networking. Well, registration is open until March 8th, but you can register uh, today if you are a high school student, if you know a high school uh, student. So uh, certainly bring it uh, to uh, their attention and you'll find more details via the link in the show notes or cyberstartamerica.org. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.